Um, we are gonna walk here in just one moment. I wanna make sure everybody's ready for that. We are walking, we are letting our principal talk to us. He's gonna say what he's gonna say and we're gonna respond and we're gonna do so respectfully because we've all been put in this position unfairly, including him. And he's been very open and transparent as have we. So we're gonna respect this process, okay? Everyone's ready. Right? Alright. Okay, we're right on time. I'm so proud of you guys. I really am. I can't. Oh, so proud of you. Alright, let's make sure. I want to do the school crossing. I tried so hard. I bet you will be other. She'll be okay with Zach Scotter. Yeah. <laughs> but the whole bus situation. First off, I really want to just express my sincere uh, gratitude and thankfulness to our community. You guys are a tremendous part of this community. Um, our strength at Margaret Brent lies in our community. Uh, we have been through a tremendous last couple of years, and it's because of our, our families, uh, your support, that we as a school, as a school division, have been able to be uh, successful and maintain a high level of learning for all of our kids. So I want to first extend that thank you you as far as parents in our community uh, for helping us to uh, maintain that high level of learning and support for our kids. I think it's been you know a, a really uh, challenging couple of years for our staff and teachers. They have maintained that high level of learning as well and that is our ultimate goal uh, through this process as well as to not have any kind of uh, interruption to our, our student learning. So again I want to thank you for that. I also want to thank you guys for uh, your communication um, you know all day Friday uh, throughout the weekend. Take your time out of your weekend uh, for Boy Scouts uh, after my son's baseball practice uh, again just to discuss this process and making it a smooth one to again to where uh, you know, we both agree that our ultimate goal here is to uh, not interrupt the learning environment of our students and to make sure that we are uh, discussing um, our next steps as far as how to continue to get a high level learning for our students here at Margaret Bryant also through the school division. So uh, one of the things I'll reiterate and I want to make sure I say it just as Governor Youngkin had stated that um, he urges all parents to listen to their principal and trust the legal process. It is something that I know that um, is ongoing down in Richmond and something that um, of course I know you have seen that the school board did. Uh, Again, um, I, uh, so do you want to cover, provided we're all the same, we're all going to comply with Executive Order Number 2, State Bill 1303 for in-person learning, and then you're going to tell us that you wear a mask, correct? Yes. Here in front of school. 
school ready to put our children in. So what is my option? What are these parents' options, choices, right now, this to, minute? To doc, I'm sorry, we yes. just want to document each family as we would love to have your students in school today. Uh, we'd love to have them come join their classrooms, come join their, their classmates and their teachers. The teachers, again, I can't highlight. And they started heading this direction, and then they went back and they went in the, the building. So what exactly is going on, and why aren't you following the executive board? We are all. And so they're not going to have masks on, so what's happening now? Then you and I can collaborate, communicate. Okay, let's collaborate. What are, discuss, what's going on? We can discuss concurrent learning if you want. Let's to discuss it, because i got to go. i got to work. I will just need your information so I can let the teachers know that you want to have them log in to be able to have their... Okay, so um, we can, can we provide that? Because i got to go to work. Thanks. You need an option right now. They're supposed to be in school now. We get in trouble if we don't bring our kids in. We do it like 10 times. You guys call the social services office. What are you doing? As far as the what are the options? School division, we're following the guidelines uh, uh, put forth. I want to reinforce all of you as our families. Uh, we, uh, we want our students in school. We want to make sure that no more interruptions for the learning to take place. That's our roundup one for our children. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm telling you verbally, you. both of my children have opted out. I think you know who I am. Do you? Yeah. And I'm sorry, I know this is a hard position for you. But I'm not backing down. I'm standing up for my children and their rights. Thank you all for coming in today. We appreciate your support our community. So, but my children went in. What are you doing with my children? Are these official opt-out forms that are provided and can be filled out, or are they just self-written, or what do you want to do? Um, so these are fake documents. Is there a I'm Crystal Vinucci, if you guys don't know me, I'm the Chairman of the Board of Supervisors. I'm here today just as the Rock Hill District Supervisor. Um, obviously, I believe in parents' choice. I support Governor Youngkin's executive order. I do believe that the school board got this decision wrong, and I support you guys. But I just wanted to be here to make sure that you guys knew, and I know all of you, so I know it's going to be peaceful. I know you're just trying to have your voices heard because you feel that the school board got it wrong. I have spoken with the governor's office this morning. They expect that the Supreme Court is going to have an expedited ruling this week. They are very, very positive and very, very favorable that the executive order, that the ruling will be um, in favor of the executive order. So just be patient with us. I know it's been a tough two years. So I just wanted to share those thoughts with you guys before you go in today. Peace. The administrators and the school teachers, they didn't make this decision. So just remember that it's not their fault. It was the school board. No. Yeah. <laughs> so direct your attention there. No. Direct your attention there. Um, if, the, if there is a favorable ruling on the executive order, 
then the school should be lifting the mandate. I mean, it's as simple as that. So well, it, we can sit and debate about the efficacy of masks or vaccines or whatnot, but what this is really boils down to, at least for me, is bodily autonomy and telling people what they can and can't do with their bodies. Um, oh, okay. Of course, if you're going to play the government school game, you're going um, to I'm have to you know, follow the government rules on it. But it should still be set up so that people can determine their own fate and their own future and how their bodies are treated. And if somebody chooses to put on a mask or get a vaccine, then that's totally fine. But it should be the exact same, the opposite direction as well. Do me a favor. Um, tell me your name first and last. Timothy Lewis. And spell that off. T i m o t h y l e w i s. And what town do you live? Kids in. Uh, I live in uh, Stafford County. Over with my friends for yeah. Thank you. Appreciate your time. No problem. Appreciate it. Um, what message do you think the yes. school division received today that you came out here? Um, I would. I hope the message that they received is that our kids matter. Um, to us okay. that we feel like on, what they're doing is illegal, there. that we're not okay with that, and it is time for us to stand up and say that the learning that is happening it needs to be better, and, it, and you need to follow the law, and until you do so, we will continue to be here, we will continue to be united, we will continue to show up and put pressure until the mandate, I'm sorry, the school board changes its mind and follows the law. It is not okay. And while I appreciate Mr. Fitzgerald, it's not okay for him to not follow the law either. And the school board put us in a position to have to show up here and have this interaction. That's not fair to him and it's not fair to us and it's most importantly not, not fair to our kids. What has been the effect on your kids having to wear masks in schools? Um, for Micah in particular, she says she can't hear her teachers, so she feels like she's not learning things. This interaction was prompted starting months ago when her grandma called me and said, I need to talk to you. Your daughter said to me today on the ride home that she doesn't feel ready to start the second grade. And I asked her why, and she said, because I can't read like a second grader. There is no doubt that masks have played a role in our children's lack of education. And I appreciate the job that teachers are doing, but that level is not the level that it should be. And those masks are directly impacting their ability to learn. And that is the impact on her and every student. Whether you agree with masks or not, the data shows that our students are behind in learning. How long will that take to catch up? Say your name first and last and spell it out for me, please. Carla Alsop, K-A-R-L-A-A-L-S-O-P. And you live in Stafford County. I live in Stafford County. My student attends Margaret Brent Elementary School, and we're in the Hartwood District. Thank you. What is the message that you feel that you all got out today here at the Margaret Brink Elementary School? Um, that parents matter and parents have a right to, to be in, uh, to make decisions for their children. I mean, this isn't even really about masks anymore, as it were. And I think Crystal said it best earlier, right? Like, this is about parent choice and the parents having the right to decide one way or the other whether their child is forced masked or not. We have so much scientific study now behind all this. So it's a difficult time because we've we've been put in this, you know, sort of if this then that, what if this then that. We're in legal lim legal limbo because of the way that um, some things were written. So I think it was important for the parents. They needed this. An executive order is not law. It's not legislation. It's not legis by the legislator. It's, it's signed by the governor. And your school board backed that up. So as someone who voted to adhere to the executive order, where does the fight for you go from here? So I, you know, it's still vague for me. And I think that I, that's why I was clear that I said no to the, mo that why I said no to the motion that they were presenting. Because I believe there's a lot of ambiguity um, we've led the last two years by EO as a law, or at least that was the perception that was given. So it's very di it was very difficult for me to discern uh, based on the information we were given. I, for the research, I'm still confused. <laughs> you know, so so I, I believe that Governor Youngkin is right. We do have to abide by what the school board decided until we can figure things out. But parents have been doing this for two years and they're tired and they have the right to be. And we, to be honest with you, we've been standing up for masks and those parents have been heard. For two years they've been heard. Their message has been heard. We want our kids in masks. And no one has heard the parents that don't.
So today was about letting them be heard and letting them finally get a sense that they're fighting for their children and that they're making a better future for their kids. Say your name first and last and spell it out for me, please. Alyssa Halstead, A-L-Y-S-S-A, H-A-L-S-T-E-A-D. And you are the? Hartwood School Board Representative. Hartwood District in Stafford County, Virginia. Correct. Okay. That Thank is you me. very much. Appreciate Thank you. It.